Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to day two of our God Ordained Marriage Corporate Fast. Day two is all about the blessing and betrayal. So I understand um, for some of us, we, you know, you might be dealing with uh, being betrayed by your God Ordained spouse, um, and that might be something, you know, that's hard for you to overcome, work through. So the Lord put this on my spirit last night. Um, cause I had something different I was going to teach, but he put this on my spirit. So he wants us to, uh, begin to find the blessing and the betrayal. So here's the thing about betrayal in the moment when you are being betrayed, you know, betrayal, it never comes from, you know, your enemies. It always comes from someone close to you. It comes from someone you trusted. It comes from someone you probably love, right? It never comes from, um, your enemies, you know? Usually it never comes from your enemy. Um, and God already knows this. This is why he tells us in Psalms 27, verse 10, when my, when my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up, right? God is already letting us know, listen, if they forsake me, they will forsake you. You know, if they betray me, they will betray you as well. But there's a blessing in the betrayal. And scripture also talks about a person's enemies will be those of his own household. So betrayal, what I have learned from betrayal is that, yes, there's a blessing in the betrayal. And in the moment when you're being betrayed, it doesn't feel good. You don't even see the blessing. You you, you know, you, you're questioning God, and you're like, God, what, what happened? I thought you said X, Y, and Z, but yet this individual betrayed me, right? But it's all about finding the blessing in the betrayal. God wants you to know that when your spouse forsake you, the Lord will receive you, okay? God already knew, okay, whatever you went through with your spouse, he already He already knew that you was going to go through it. And he allowed you to go through it because there's a blessing on the other side, okay? So if you're dealing with betrayal right now, if your heart is hurting uh, regarding anything that you dealt with with your spouse, understand God is allowing you to go through this because he wants you, number one, to grow through it, but number two, there's a blessing at the end, okay? He's going to turn this betrayal around for your good, all right? Um, and so... The thing is, you know, it tells us in Psalms 118, verse 22, it says the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Let me tell you something, okay? Because when the Lord began to pour this this uh, message out in my spirit last night, you know, I, I was just, just, just hooping and hollering. I was just shouting for joy, right? Because the very people who have rejected you, okay, what they didn't know is that they just rejected the very person who God is going to use to bless their life, right? Think about it. When you when you read the story of Joseph in the Bible, he was betrayed by his brothers. They plotted to kill him, right? They sold him into Egypt. They also did witchcraft on him as well when you read the story. But what they didn't know, the very person that they betrayed would be the very person who God used to bless them, to save their life. The very person the enemy plotted to kill is going to be the very individual God uses to help save your life. Come on now. So understand there's a blessing in betrayal. David was betrayed by Saul, and he became the next king. Saul knew that David was going to be um, the next king. That's why he kept trying to comfort his life, you know. But even in all of that, David, he stayed respectful. He, you know, he continued, he continued to be, you know, uh, an upstanding man. He was a man of character. He didn't disrespect Saul, you know, um, but Saul and his evilness, he kept on coming for David. And as a result, Saul didn't realize it, but Saul helped, he, Saul helped push David further into his purpose. Okay. And that's what betrayal does. It helps put you in the position where God needs you to be. Going back to the story of Joseph. His brothers, Joseph's brothers, they betrayed Joseph. They thinking in their mind, we selling him. We're going to go ahead and sell him. Y'all sold him right into the location where God needed him. The dream God gave Joseph, that because whatever dream God gives you, there's a location attached to that dream, okay? And so his brothers, they plotting with their evil heart thinking, yeah, we about to sell our brother. We about to, you know, we're going to try to stop his dream from coming to pass, but they didn't even know 
the very place they sold him into was where God needed him to be so that the dream could now be birthed. And he would be in a position to save the very people who plotted on his life. So there's a blessing in your uh, in you being betrayed. Okay, that betrayal was for your protection. That betrayal, you know, it redirected you back to your heavenly father. You know, that betrayal, it, it was for your protection. I need you to begin to help yourself to begin to see the um the blessing that's coming out of this betrayal. Because let me tell you something, and I'm speaking from experience here, but you don't know your script until you've been betrayed, right? Some of you until that until you were betrayed. You know, that, that betrayal is the very thing that caused you to get to the, to the feet of the Lord. That betrayal puts you closer to your Heavenly Father. That betrayal is going to be the very thing God uses to promote you right in front of your enemies. Come on now. So there's a blessing in betrayal, and I know in the moment it doesn't feel like a blessing. It doesn't feel like a blessing. You're hurting. But God said, hold on because I'm going to turn this around for your good, okay? Now, I want to share five things uh, with you about betrayal, okay? This is what you need to know about betrayal. Number one, okay, whenever you are betrayed, it, it doesn't matter who it comes from, mom, dad, spouse, friends, it doesn't matter who the betrayal is coming from, but you need to know that you didn't do anything to deserve being betrayed. It was part of the plan. That betrayal was part of your process. That betrayal, it had to break you in order to build you for such a time as this, okay? So you didn't do anything to deserve being betrayed, okay? That betrayal, the person who betrayed you has everything to do with that individual, not you, okay? That's number one. Number two, the second thing I want you to know about betrayal is that betrayal isn't your identity. Sometimes when we are betrayed, you know, by a spouse, we tend to, you know, um, we, we tend to say things like, I'm a fool for, you know, loving them. I'm a fool for giving them a second or third or however many chances you have given the person. I'm a fool for this. I'm a fool for that. You know, um, we also allow that betrayal to hit, like, affect our worth, and we begin to feel unworthy or undeserving. But let me tell you something. That betrayal isn't your identity. Okay, you are blessed, you are beautiful, you are bold, you are brilliant, and you are brought into this kingdom of God for such a time as this. I need you to own that identity, okay? I need you to rebuke that spirit of betrayal off of you and say, no, I'm walking in boldness today. I'm walking in, you know, um, God said I'm fearfully and wonderfully made today. That's your identity. I'm walking in my brilliance in the Lord. That's your identity, okay? You are not a fool for standing for your spouse. You are not a fool for giving them a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, whatever chance, okay? You are not a fool, and that is not your identity. So I need you to stand strong in your identity in Christ, okay? Knowing that you are bold, you are blessed, you are beautiful, you are brilliant, okay? The third thing I want to—I uh, want you to know about betrayal is that, like how I was saying, betrayal, it was part of the plan. It was part of the plan. Jesus knew Judah was going to betray him, and he allowed it. Jesus could have stopped that betrayal, but it was part of the plan. It was part of the plan, okay? And I'm going to connect this with number four, but the person who betrayed you, that's part of their process. So we deal with a lot of prodigals, right? We, we, we deal with a lot of prodigal spouses who are doing some betrayal, and they're doing this betrayal because of the unhealed wounds on the inside of them, Betrayal comes from prodigals, you know, when they, you know, like I said, they deal with these unhealed wounds. They, it, there's a lack of character, um, you know. They allow people to get in their ear, et cetera, et cetera. But that's also a part of their process too. G- Judas, Judas, when you read it, he was, you can tell he didn't have any character because he was able to be bought. The enemy, the enemy swayed him to, you know, turn on Jesus for some money, right? But after that betrayal, Judas realized, I just betrayed the wrong person. He realized he made a mistake. He realized, and, and he went back and tried to return it, you know. And that's what this process is all about. When your spouse betrayed you, God already knew that. He already saw the plot. He already seen the heart. He already knew that this was going to happen. And so God allows that betrayal to happen, number one, so that it can build you, 
and it can draw you closer to your Heavenly Father because there are some new things that God want to do in your life and want to birth out of your life. But also God allowed that betrayal to happen because that betrayal is like God putting a mirror up in front of your prodigal uh, spouse's face and he's showing them who they are. We could always run from ourselves. We could tell people. We could lie to ourselves and tell people, I'm great. I have character. But when you betray someone, when you betray a child of God, that's when that mirror is, is staring you right in the face. That's when you can't run from yourself. You have to look at yourself, and you have to change for the better. And so understand betrayal, it is part of the process. Um, and, again, you know, God uses everything. Scriptures say everything works out for our good, okay, to those who, you know, are called according to God's purpose. God is using everything in this love story to work it out for your good, okay? Um, and number five, there's a blessing in the breaking, okay? It's all about growing through what you go through, okay? It's all about just growing through that, that betrayal, okay? Don't try not to get stuck in the betrayal. Try not to um, – because you can start going through a grieving process, right? And it makes me think of Samuel in first in first Samuel when um, Samuel was grieving God rejecting Saul as king. And Saul, I mean, not Saul, and God, he, you know, he asked Samuel, he said, how long are you going to grieve over Saul? He's like, how long are you going to grieve over him? I already chosen the next king. Go to Jesse's house and anoint one of his sons. And that's what God is saying to you today. It's not that God is, um, what's the word? It's not that he, you know, um, not acknowledging how you feel, but he's like, how long are you going to mourn over this betrayal? Uh, or I'm already working the situation out for your good. Come on now. He said, I'm already bringing correction to your spouse. I'm already, you know, healing that wound that caused that betrayal. I'm already growing them in character. How long are you going to continue to mourn over this? How long are you going to continue to, you know, remember what happened in the past? Come on now. Scripture say, uh, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. God wants us to focus on a new thing that he is doing. He said, focus on this new thing I'm doing in this in this situation. Look at the new thing I'm doing in your heart. Look at the new thing. Look at how, how I just brought correction to your spouse. Look at how I'm removing these counterfeits. Look at how, you know, I'm, remo- I'm removing all these enemies out of your spouse's life. Look at the new thing that God is doing. Okay. So here's some things about betrayal. It is an evil spirit. We know this. It's an evil spirit. Betrayal stings from a lack of character. Sometimes, and I'm going to give you all some understanding because we got to have understanding here. When we talk about healing, I should have said this at the beginning, but healing comes, number one, through fasting, right? When you fast regarding healing, whether you are dealing with uh, any type of wounds or traumas or triggers, um, uh, Yes, things of that nature. When you fast to receive healing, God is the one who comes in during the fasting and he removes that pain out of your heart. Now, you will still have that memory there regarding what happened in the past. So that betrayal, how you were betrayed, that memory is still there. But God, during this fasting, he's going to remove the hurt and pain out of your heart. So after the fasting, then God gives you uh, the right perspective. And so one of the perspectives that God has given to me when I went through the betrayal was he kept saying it was spiritual manipulation. And so I was like, God, I need you to go deeper than that. Like, what does that mean? You know, because when I looked at it in the physical, it looked like free will. It looked like, you know, the individual was against me. I need you to go deep. And so the spiritual manipulation I want to talk to you all about, if you were betrayed by your spouse, is, uh, the love spell, the separation spell. Whenever the enemy put a love spell on your spouse and and put a uh, separation spell on you, betrayal will be present. Okay, because this individual, they're no longer operating in their in, like in their own free will. They are being manipulated spiritually. Okay, and along with all these love spells and separation spells, you know. It's, it's a strategic it's a strategic plot of the enemy, okay, um, where now the enemy is, is whispering lies in your spouse's ear concerning you, okay? And so, again, 
all of this, when, when you're dealing with a spouse that's up under these love spells and separation spells, betrayal will be present, okay? So if that's the situation you are dealing with, God wants you to, you know, show your spouse mercy. He wants you to get understanding concerning spiritual manipulation and how it showed up in your love story uh, because that's the very thing that's going to bring about healing, okay? We got to have the right perspective concerning things, okay? And you have to be willing to let go because um, sometimes we can we we could have been hurt so long, you know we could have been hurt all our life to where we just hold on to the thing and we say you know what I'm not forgiving this person I'm not letting this go, but listen that forgiveness is for you okay the forgiveness is for you because you're the one who's not being at peace at night you're the one the enemy is tormenting at night you know concerning that betrayal you're the one who is now you know, being or thinking these thoughts, uh, I'm a fool, I don't deserve it. You see how you see how unforgiveness affects you? When we don't forgive those who hurt us, it torments us. It causes you to self hate yourself. It causes you to neglect yourself. You think you're punishing them by holding on to that unforgiveness and not forgiving that person who betrayed you, but it's doing more damage in you. So God is calling us to the carpet today. He wants us to forgive the very person or people who have betrayed you. If it was your spouse, I'm going to open up this line, and I want you all to begin to forgive your spouse. But if it was your spouse, I need you to forgive your spouse. If it was your parents, Scripture says when your father and mother forsake you, the Lord will receive you. You know, we don't expect for our parents to forsake us. Right, but if you were forsaken by your parents, then I need you to go ahead and forgive your parents. If you were rejected by whoever in your life or abandoned, I need you to forgive these individuals. Okay, um, so we're going to go ahead and go into forgiveness. Just go ahead and start forgiving your spouse and those who have. <laughs> Amen. I forgot to read the scripture. Mark chapter 11, verse 25. It say, and whenever you stand praying, forgiving, if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. So, Father, we thank you that we are forgiven because we have released that forgiveness towards those who have hurt us, those who have betrayed us in the past. We forgive them, Father, 
In the name of Jesus Christ, and we ask that you will heal our heart. We invite you into our heart to heal it, Father, of that betrayal wound. Heal that um, that rejection wound, Father. Heal that abandonment wound, Father. Heal the wound. Er, w- w- Heal the womb when we were overlooked. Heal the womb when we were neglected. Heal the womb when we were taken advantage of, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray. Um, I'm going to pray over you all, but I also want to pray for your prodigal spouses, okay? And I specifically want to, I'm going to target their heart, your prodigal. I'm going to target your heart and your prodigal spouse's heart in prayer because this is what's going to move this um just move this love story and bring about change. Um, so, Heavenly Father, I rebuke that spirit of betrayal off of your children, off of your prodigal spouses in the name of Jesus Christ. We rebuke the spirit of deception uh, in Jesus' name. I rebuke that disloyalty spirit, that rejection spirit. I rebuke it and bind it in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke that abandonment spirit in Jesus' name. I rebuke that hateful spirit off of your prodigals and off of your children, Father, in Jesus' name. I rebuke that spirit of jealousy that spirit of envy that has caused them to now betray those who they are envious of. I rebuke it, bind it in the name of Jesus Christ. And I also command the spirit of betrayal to come out of your children in the name of Jesus Christ. I command the spirit of deception to come out in the name of Jesus Christ. I command that disloyalty spirit, that rejection spirit, that abandonment spirit, that hateful spirit to come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, your word says in Psalms 147, verse 3, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. To bind means to tie up a problematic situation. So we thank you, Father, that you are tying up, you are binding up these problematic situations these prodigals have gotten themselves in, Father. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father, that you are binding up their mother and father wounds. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father, that you are binding up our rejection wound. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father, that you are binding of these abandonment wounds, Father, in Jesus' name, and you are creating in us a clean heart and renewing a right spirit within us, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, that you are binding up the wound that came from when your children were raped or molested in the name of Jesus Christ. Bind up that disrespectful wound, in Jesus' name. Bind up the wounds that came when we were offended by prodigal's actions and behavior, Father, in Jesus' name. Bind up these prodigal wounds when they were in prison, when they were rejected, bind up the wounds that came from them being in these prodigal lifestyle, Father, in Jesus' name. We bind up all cold heart in the name of Jesus Christ. We bind up harsh heart in an, or, or harsh word in the name of Jesus Christ. We bind up and rebuke and renounce every word curse spoken out of these prodigals' mouth over your children in the name of Jesus Christ. We bind up that spirit of anger, bitterness, resentment, hate animosity, holding a grudge, unforgiveness. We bind this up in the name of Jesus Christ, and we loose the fruit of the Spirit over prodigals right now. I loose the fruit of the Spirit over your children on this call in the name of Jesus Christ. We bind up all of these spirits, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. We bind up all traumas from the past in Jesus' name. We bind up childhood wounds in Jesus' name. Father, we ask that you will release your spirit into your children in this season, Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, that who the Son has set free is free indeed in Jesus' name. I also ask you, Father, that you will reveal to the prodigals and to your children listening in on this call their identity in Christ. I ask that you will encounter your children in ways where it pours out your love on them and they feel your love. They feel the heart of their father, Father. I also pray and ask that you would reveal to your prodigals and your children, you know, their worth in you, Father. Reveal to them where their worth comes from, Father. Grow them up in greater character, Father. Let them know that they are not forgotten. Your words say, never would I leave you, never would I forsake you. You are always by our side. So we thank you, Father, for always being by our side in the name of Jesus Christ. And also, We thank you, Father, that we want to do exactly as Isaiah 43, verse 18 say, that we will remember not the former things nor consider the things of old. Why? Because we see the new thing you are doing. We see the new thing you're doing, Father. We see the new thing you're doing in us. I see the new thing you're doing in my spouse. We see the new thing you're doing in in their spouse, Father. And so we thank you, Father, for this new spouse you're giving to us. We thank you, Father, for the new house. We thank you for the new heart you have given us, Father. We thank you for purging out of our heart that hurt and pain in Jesus' name. We thank you for this renewed mindset we are now walking in. We thank you for this new identity we are uh, walking in. 
Father. We thank you for fighting on our behalf. We thank you for giving us victory over our enemies, Father. We thank you for removing all of these counterfeits, uh, Father. We thank you for the public proposal that is up ahead for us, Father. We thank you for the many testimonies that your children will receive from this betrayal, Father. We thank you for turning this betrayal into blessings after blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. And so with that, we are done. I, well, before we get done, I want us to just go ahead and just continue to thank God for the blessing. Thank God for healing your heart. Just thank God for the new thing that he is already doing in you, in your spouse, and in your God-ordained love story. Thank you, Lord. Thank Amen. So this concludes day two um, deliverance call. I'm going to send out an email. You're going to receive an email within the next hour because tomorrow for day three, we are breaking generational curses. Um, And the email I'm going to send out to you is going to have a PDF. It's a generational curse PDF. I want you to get prepared for tomorrow. So in the PDF, it's telling you the steps on how to break the curse, but it's also um, helping you to begin to identify with what are the curses I need to break in, you know, on your bloodline. So when you get the PDF, I want you to um, ask yourself, what are the generational curses that are running rampant on your bloodline? And then also, what are the generational curses that are running rampant on your spouse's bloodline, okay? We have to close the doors to the enemy. So some of those generational curses are uh, things such as divorce, absent fathers, single motherhood, anger, pride, um, bowing down to other gods, idolatry. It can be um, mental illness, poverty, things of that nature, okay? So when I send out that, um, that PDL, get ready, get prepared for tomorrow because tomorrow we're breaking curses, we're breaking love spells, separation spells, we're going in, okay? So I want you all to be ready. Also, uh, we give giving to the poor today, so go out, give to the poor. If you are a part of our Facebook community, our community over on Facebook is called Community for God Ordained Spouses. We have, it's, it's a pin post at the top. If you can't find anyone to give to, we have a pin post inside of our group with everyone's cash app. Go ahead and choose someone on that, on that post. Go ahead and sew into their cash app so that you can complete, you know, day two, okay? And with that, that is it. So you all have a great day, and I'll have this um, recording uploaded later. Post all your testimonies up under this video in the comment section, and I will see you all tomorrow or tonight. Don't forget, tonight 
we have in our profile of the profile of a product of Bible study tonight. So I'll see you all tonight, all right?